not recording to the cloud. Okay. Well, welcome to everyone. This is our first uh, Zoom stewardship workshop, uh, sort of in our virtual space as, as we are dealing with this time of pandemic. Um, so we thought we've put out some documents um, and had some discussion uh, during our clergy and warden meetings. Um, but we thought it was uh, it was time to have a, a specific workshop on stewardship. So thank you for coming. And uh, anytime I have a presentation uh, that I prepared, but at any time, if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Uh, there is a chat function as well. Um, so if you would rather ask your question that way, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, let's start with a prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Also with you. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all the opportunities we have to gather in person and virtually. We pray that you continue to protect us and keep us safe and give us compassionate hearts so that we can tend to the poor and the marginalized and we can protect those who are most vulnerable in our communities. We pray that you be with us during our discussions on stewardship. Guard us in the way to be good stewards of the resources and gifts of in abundance that you have granted to us so that we might use them as you have sent us out into the world and for your glory and the revelation of the kingdom of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. I don't see anybody else joining in. And uh, one thing they don't tell you is um, progressive lenses are really difficult when you have multiple screens and, <laughs> and your vision is going. So, uh, yeah, if I look a little funny sometimes, it's because I'm squinting to see something. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, as I said, I have a, a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation. It's just some, some basics of stewardship, not knowing what everybody's uh, experience has been with stewardship. I imagine some of you have a lot more experience than I do. Um, so I, I certainly invite your, your wisdom shared with the group. Um, from my own experience, um, I sort of um, was interested in stewardship. Oh my gosh, it's been probably over 25 years now. Um, I was a uh, in the military and attending uh, parish, uh, the um, the base chapel, um, and I had opportunities to go on um, be a representative for the national stewardship committee um, uh, for. Uh, Canadian Forces chapels. So that was really sort of my first introduction. Um, it's something I've been passionate about. Um, I'm currently a priest associate in Leeds Anglican Ministries, which is in uh, the St. Lawrence Deanery, uh, sort of north of Rockville, um, and, uh, but still sort of uh, west of Kempville. So we're, we're in that sort of corner. Um, and uh, so we have four parishes and uh, it's, it's been a delight, um, but this is my first, these are my first parishes. Uh, I come uh, as a priest uh, as a second career. Um, I was a military officer for many years. Um, I've also been a warden. I've been on finance committees. I've been on capital uh, a campaign task force. Um, kind of you name it, <laughs> been involved in sort of uh, leadership, um, financial leadership and stewardship visioning. Um, so that's a bit of my background. And, and one thing that that has all taught me is that I don't know anything. Um, I'm always learning and always looking for new opportunities. And hello, Donna, <laughs> we can now see you. <laughs> Um, so, I will start by sharing my screen. Any questions before we begin? All right, can everybody see my screen now? Right. Good, all right. All your mandarins. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was trying to find something with fruit, and that was the only, or something living, uh, and that was the only one with the template. So, so this is Stewardship 101, the pandemic version. Um, and uh, the quote I have, and, and these are the ones sown on good soil. They hear the word accepted and bear fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Um, and I, it's not as specifically uh, what we typically see as a stewardship uh, verse, but it spoke to me about um, sort of nurturing that seed and, and bearing fruit um, as we use the gifts and resources that God has given us. So our topics uh, today is uh, talking about just sort of a really high level look at the theology of stewardship and scriptural foundation. Um, a funny note is I, when I went to seminary and that was relatively recently, um, not a lot of stewardship uh, discussion, not a lot of stewardship theology. It was maybe part of um, some courses like a subset, but there wasn't an offering an opportunity of a specific stewardship theology course. Um, and I think that's really missing in our um, theological development of, of postulants. We will look at the definition of, of uh, theology. Uh, can you tell I come from a military background? Every single course starts with a definition. <laughs> but this gives us an opportunity to talk about what stewardship is and what it isn't. Oops, sorry. I'm just making sure nobody else is waiting. Okay. Um, we'll next talk about roles and responsibilities. Um, everybody has a role and responsibility in stewardship. Uh, then we'll look at some of the um, some of the principles uh, for a year-round or a seasonal seasonal stewardship campaign, um, and how you can basically be leaders. Uh, in your parish, in 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 communicating um, those those principles of stewardship, we'll look at some specific programs um, that are available uh, for you to follow and um, resources that are free. Free is always good, um, and we'll talk about some of the other resources. Uh, maybe I, I'd love if you shared some of your favorite books, for example, or if somebody has a great website or a blog uh, on stewardship. Then we'll talk a little bit about best, best practices and lessons learned, um, especially in the context of the pandemic. What has been working for you? What are you struggling with? Um, what, is, what was a complete catastrophe and what, what did you learn out of that? Uh, and then finally, we'll just open that up for, for general discussion and maybe talk about um, some topics that you would like to see in the future. Okay, any questions so far? And if I speak too fast, just yell at me <laughs> or wave a hand or something. <laughs> okay. So our theology of stewardship, um, it really finds its root uh, in scripture. Um, we see it in, in God's narrative story of, of uh, coming into our awareness. Um, from creation uh, all the way through those journeys uh, with Abraham, with Moses, and with the people of Israel in exile, uh, continues through the life and ministry of Jesus. And then it continues even in the life of the disciples after resurrection. And that's not just the, the, the apostles, um, but that's you and I as well, and anyone who has called themselves a follower of Christ. Um, it has been an integral part. Um, and, and stewardship uh, even has a, a bearing on, on the new creation, sort of that, that uh, apocalyptic um, revealing of God's kingdom and, and Christ coming again. Um, from the Anglican Church of Canada, they, they did a, a wonderful um, uh, resource, um, which was just a, a two-pager, but it talks about that theological foundation. Um, and that was in response um, to the uh, General, Stin Sorry. General Synod Standing Committee on uh, Philanthropy in February 2011. And it's called Theology of Stewardship, a Faithful Response to God's Mission. 
Um, and that's basically at its simplest form what stewardship is. It's our faithful response, our trust in God, um, in how we respond to using the gifts we've been given uh, to do God's mission, because it's not about what we want to do, it's about what God is calling us to do. Uh, some of my favorite uh, scripture references um, of this, this sort of journey, um, uh, the basis for the theology of stewardship uh, in scripture is of course uh, in Genesis, um, when the Lord God took the man, Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. Um, immediately in creation, we were created and given the commission to tend to the earth, to tend to everything that God had created. Um, God created us not for, for stewardship. Um, God created us to be in relationship with God in relationship with one another. But he gave us a mission. He sent us out so that uh, we could be stewards of creation. The next scripture that I put up on the slide is, uh, truly I tell you this poor widow has put more in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury for all of them had contri contributed out of their abundance but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had all she had to live on and that's of course from mark 12 um, and and uh, other gospels the danger sometimes when we um, cherry pick verses to support stewardship is we don't know how they're going to be received um, and we don't know how they're going to be delivered. Stewardship isn't about um, imploring, manipulating, obligating people to give more um, than, than they need to survive. The widow uh, trusted in God, and I'm sure God's providence uh, provided for her, but when we misuse um, these scriptures, um, we could send the wrong message. Sometimes um, we create barriers, we create obligations that cause undue harm to people, especially people who uh, are marginalized uh, in poverty and struggling. Um, so I, I caution you in, in whatever scripture you find your rootedness in uh, with regards to stewardship. Just, just give it that sober second thought. Um, and then the final scripture uh, verse I'll give you is uh, from 1 Peter chapter 4. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. So stewardship, that theology is always uh, underlined by how we serve one another, how we are the hands and feet, uh, feet of Christ in the world. With respect to the theology of stewardship, it is also um, not just in scripture, but is, it is amplified, I guess you could say, uh, in our own baptismal covenant, um, in, in those promises that we make to seek and serve Christ in all persons, to strive for justice and peace among all people, to respect the dignity of every human being, and to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth. So stewardship is, is really something um, that we take on. Um, and and it's, it is an obligation in that sense, um, but it's one that we undertake with joy. Um, and, and we respond to how God is calling us to live out our baptismal covenant. Um, I might have it somewhere else, but uh, in, in one of the definitions of stewardship, and, and I think Wayne and I have touched on this before in our own conversations, uh, stewardship is everything you do after you say, I believe. Um, it, it's how you live out uh, your life in Christ as, as a follower of Christ. 
And then um, in addition to the baptismal covenant, it's also uh, part of the five marks of mission um, in the Anglican communion, um, though that, that uh, guiding document, um, which really underlies so much of, of how we are structured as, as individual congregations and parishes and how we shape our, our, our mission, our ministry, um, and our vision for where God is calling us into the future. The ones that are most relevant uh, to stewardship are to respond to human need by loving service, to seek to transform the unjust structures of society, and then to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. And you can definitely see the parallels with our baptismal covenant. Any questions or comments? Thoughts? Okay. All right. My most exciting piece, the definition of stewardship. <laughs> Um, now, this definition uh, I found in a few documents, and it was like, this is the classical definition, um, but they never did attribute this definition, and I, I tried as I might, I could not find it. Uh, but it reads, stewardship is receiving God's gifts gratefully, cherishing and tending them in a responsible and accountable manner, sharing them in justice and love with others, and returning them with increase to the Lord. So what stood out for me there is, is the receiving, being receptive to God's gifts, tending those gifts, nurturing those, um, sharing them, not just keeping them to ourselves, not burying them in the ground, um, and then returning them with increase to the Lord, to, to you know, um, be grateful and, and praise God and, and be in awe of, of how God multiplies these gifts that we are given. It is a complete lifestyle of accountability and responsibility, acknowledging God as the creator and owner of all. What we have is what God has given us. Um, and, uh, I, I remember, oh, and I can't remember his name. He was a, a lay canon in the Diocese of Ottawa, one of the early uh, synods I went to. And he said, God doesn't want 5% or 10% of what you have. God wants 100% of what God gave you. Um, and uh, that really sort of puts it in perspective. A, a steward isn't a, an owner. A steward is a manager of what God owns. What, uh, and once we see that everything is God's, um, we're, we're less likely to be so possessive about it and, and often selfish. Stewards as disciples of Jesus Christ are themselves caretakers of all God's gifts. And gratitude for these gifts is expressed in prayer, worship, action, and offering by eagerly sharing these gifts out of love for God and for one another. So that is the definition that I found, um, but there's lots of definitions. And uh, uh, Douglas Hambridge uh, wrote a, a, a very, just a, a brief book, um, and Wayne has copies of these, and it's called the S word, um, because so many people look negatively on that word stewardship. Um, and I think I, I qualify that and say people are confidently misunderstanding what stewardship means. Everybody has, has uh, sort of this embedded, it's almost <laughs> like an engraved definition in their minds, and it's usually negative. Um, and that's, that's really unfortunate um, because it, it really is a healthy part of our life as disciples. Ah, I found that quote, yes. It, it was, apparently came from the Episcopal Church uh, that defines stewardship as what I do with all that I have after I say I believe. Um, and, and that's a very complex concept. Um, so I think it needs a little bit of, of prayer and discernment. What I want to say about um, stewardship uh, is what it is, is holistic. 
Um, it's not one thing, it's not one narrow silo that doesn't interact with other um, theologies or ships in, in, in our life in Christ. It, it's not distinct from worship. It's not distinct from fellowship. Um, but it's interwoven with, with our mission, with our discipleship, our hospitality, our evangelism, and so much more. It's also best um, um, incorporated into our life if it's embodied and layered. It's not just one person's responsibility. It's not just a personal accountability. It's not just up to the clergy. Um, but everybody has a responsibility and, and it's something that has to be woven into, into our life and layered so that it's accessible to all people. Um, and finally, the thing I'll say that it is, is it requires a discipline of discernment. Um, it, it's something that we have to continue to revisit, to pray about, um, to see, discern what gifts we have been given and discern how God is calling us to use those gifts. Um, if we have a very narrow vision of what stewardship is or a narrow definition, um, then we're not, we're not accessing that, that discernment and what can be revealed. Stewardship is not just about money. It's not about fundraising. Um, it's not about just, just the money. Um, and in fact, quite often that, that clouds our judgment. Um, it's also not about sort of a business or resource management programmatic version. Um, sometimes we can get too distracted in, in wanting to adhere to a specific program that we lose the working of the spirit or the, the, the call of the spirit um, in how we are using our gifts. Um, and we, we get bogged down and, and we always get sort of trapped in those cycles of, of um, almost hypocrisy sometimes, like do as I say, not as I do. Because when we make it about money or fundraising or um, our investments, if we make the church into a business, then we lose our foundation um, and, and we're, we're, we mislead people and, and people know that um, and people respond to that and it, and it puts up barriers. Anybody have a great definition of stewardship they'd like to share? Uh, Trish, I'd like to add one thing to this. Uh, I was at a, a stewardship workshop a number of years ago that Douglas did, and he uh, said that we need to be aware that stewardship is already underway, mm. regardless of whether or not we've got a program or, or we're going to develop one. Stewardship is the way we are as the people of God in the place where we find ourselves. And he said that what we really need to be looking at is trying to discern, are we doing the best um, with what we've got? And are we looking at what God is asking of us to do? And he said, sometimes he said, the stewardship that's happening, he said, could be improved on. Sometimes it is actually doing all that stewardship really needs to, to, to do to accomplish God's um, call. So, you know, what you're saying here fits in with all of that. And uh, I think people get scared about when the word stewardship is mentioned. And when you put into the conversation all the things that we've looked at on the screen and mm -hmm. so on, mm -hmm. uh, people get intimidated. And they feel, well, that's an awful lot. I, don't, I can't do that. Well, no. you can do a you're lot. You're already doing it. You're uh, already doing it. I, I would two things, Trish, to this awesome uh, list. Have. One is, uh, it was Archbishop Colin Johnson a few years ago talked about the church's work being our continual effort at trying to catch up to God, to God's mission in the world. In other words, we'll always lag behind, but we keep trying with effort and prayer. And second, um, this is something I came across just a few weeks ago around the season of creation and environmental stewardship. Um, one author said that uh, uh, faithful stewardship is management as a sacred trust. 
And I think that's just other words for what you've put there, but it's a sense of the sacred and that has been entrusted to us uh, faithfully over the course of our lifetime and that of our church. Wonderful. Sorry, I'm writing at the same time. <laughs> Great, thank you. Those are, those are very helpful. Um, and it, it is helpful because people have different bridges of, of approach, different, um, I guess, avenues of approach. Um, and sometimes when you give that, that wealth of definitions, something clicks with somebody and they finally don't see it as something negative, but something that they can be enthusiastic about. And, and that's what we want. God loves a cheerful, enthusiastic giver. <laughs> okay. Roles and responsibilities. Um, I don't know if you can read that. <laughs> right. I, I love Jay Sidebottom. Um, anyhow, if you can't, it's, it's a warden yeah. saying, as senior warden, let me commend you on your forthright approach to stewardship. But I'm afraid that show me the money is not one of the approved operatory sentences. <laughs> <laughs> don't you wish? <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. Finding my place here. Sorry about that. So, I think that, as you're moving along, Chris, this reminds me of a story I, I heard uh, from Peter Wall uh -huh. attending a stewardship years ago in the United States where they took up an offering. And the prayer over the gifts was the celebrant lifting oh. the plate and flipping it over and saying, Lord, this is what we think of you today. Oh. And you could hear all this change rolling around. Ooh. And then he said, now, now we'll take up the offering. Ooh. <laughs> that takes some courage. I don't know that I have the courage for it. It's quite dramatic and effective. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That's, yeah. Okay. All right. So, roles and responsibility. Lots of people, lots of groups of people have uh, responsibility and role when it comes to um, stewardship. And, and these are elements of stewardship that include sort of that, that discernment piece um, that leads you to goal setting, to, to sort of your, your missional approach. Um, and, and it helps uh, to understand who, who is involved in, in sort of teaching, sort of being that, that mentor. And and an element of, of teaching, which I think is the best way of teaching, is, is sort of those, that storytelling um, piece. Um, as, as a gospel people, we are a people of stories. Um, and, uh, you know, scripture is certainly an inspiration for how telling those stories of our um, relationship with God and God's relationship with us uh, inspires people, brings them hope. And, and helps us find a new life in Christ. Um, I don't want to get into too many specifics because I do not have a definitive list and everybody will have their own sort of views. Um, in terms of, of clergy, from my understanding and what, what I've witnessed, it's best if clergy sort of keeps in, in the, the avenue of sort of the theology of, of um, stewardship not being the one that would specifically say we need ten thousand dollars to replace the roof um so everybody's going to up their offering by five percent um not being sort of that that hands-on um I, I i did see a sermon like that from uh, another diocese and i actually it was cringeworthy it was just it was it was it just felt manipulative to me and I could be wrong. That's my view. Um, um, and, and I, you know, I welcome sort of feedback on that. But clergy also has to lead by example. Um, and in terms of being a good steward themselves um, and, and having that prayerful discernment of, of how they use their gifts. Wardens are um, 
they should be consistent with the clergy message. And I'm not saying wardens should get on board with what the clergy think. Um, there has to be a, a communication there. There has to be a dialogue. Um, but you should all be on the same page. Otherwise, um, that's just going to complicate the message you're trying to give to uh, your parish, to, to those under your care of souls. Um, wardens should be great cheerleaders of stewardship. Um, they should not be the ones of saying, oh, that S word, <laughs> we don't do mm -hmm. stewardship. Um, they, they really should be, be a cheerleader and enthusiastic. And again, leading by example. Um, treasurers are uh, a blessing. Um, they, I, I, don't, I don't envy their job. They have a difficult job. But at its root, um, treasurers are advisors. Um, and I've seen some parishes get into trouble when the treasurer influences um, too much um, authority when it comes to uh, stewardship goals. And, and they want to sort of protect the money. They want to put money mm. into investments. They want to grow that, that, that mm. capital reserve. Um, and they don't always see how sometimes maybe you're being called to, to be generous, um, sacrificially generous. Um, to, to support a new ministry that God has called you into. Um, so they do have a, an important part, but, but it's wardens and clergy need to know sort of where that fits uh, in, their, in their vision of stewardship in their congregation or parish. Um, parish Advisory Council um, need to be part and feel part of, of a parish vision and execution of the stewardship program, if you, however that is, is manifest. Um, and there, there needs to be a way to get their, their input. Um, some places have stewardship committees. Sometimes the parish advisory committee is that stewardship committee. Um, and, and they just need to be heard and valued. Um, otherwise, they're the representatives of your parish to the leadership, to the executive. And, and if they feel undervalued, that's going to get amplified in your wider congregation. So very important to involve them. Um, individuals. Individuals means not just members of the parish, not just people who sit in pews or sit in chairs or part of the congregation, uh, but it also includes your wider community shareholders. Um, and, and I think if you spend some time in discernment trying to figure out who those people really are, um, it'll be eye-opening. Um, and, and you'll see that you have a lot of potential to generate um, more interest and enthusiasm for stewardship. And, and there's more opportunities for where God is calling us. Uh, the key thing um, with, with individuals is... is to recognize that people have their own stories. They have their own history. Um, some people have been really hurt by fundraising, intention, Sundays, um, financial uh, aspects of the church in the past. Um, so you have to be sensitive to that. Um, be respectful and, and appreciate, um, you know, what people give. Um, and when you're appreciating what people give, make sure you don't sort of tip over into idolizing the money. Um, I had an example once where um, somebody who doesn't go to the church, um, somebody wealthy in the community plops down $5,000, um, which is very small portion of their big wealth. Um, and, and there was this great grandstanding announcements, thank you, profe you know, profession of appreciation. And unfortunately, it leaves a bad taste because you have people in your congregation who have been giving sacrificially of their time, talents, and treasures for years and years who don't get that same appreciation. Um, so what message is that sending? So just, just be aware of those kind of things. Um, and then the diocese has a role to play, um, again, by leading by example. Um, everything that we, we sort of recommend and encourage parishes to do, the diocese should be doing as well, um, discerning 
uh, how they are using the gifts that they receive, um, things that can help communicate that to the parishes at large are things like narrative budgets um, and, and incorporating policies that embody good stewardship. A um, couple of the examples in our diocese is the arrears resolution policy, which came out in 2017. Um, so that's, that's very positive. Um, and we are also looking at the, um, get the right name for it, and I've lost it. It's basically the church uh, support um, fund, which uh, is a result of sort of the, the pandemic response team's work and um, some of the surplus we might have been getting from Sue's. Um, so there, there's an ability to help out parishes who are really struggling at this time. Any thoughts on roles and responsibilities? Anybody we missed? Okay. All right. Stewardship campaigns. Everybody loves stewardship campaigns. Not. <laughs> Um, for some people, it's a necessary evil. Uh, some people really are enthusiastic and, and it's an opportunity to um, be creative and, and to uh, be intentional in, in uh, doing sort of that gift inventory mm -hmm. and uh, seeing how we're, we're called, mm -hmm. um, where we can share our gifts. This is just sort of a brief suggestion um, when we talk about stewardship being holistic and embodied, it really shouldn't be just a one time a year thing. It, it should have um, ripples throughout the whole calendar. So that's why I sort of just summarized what that might look like. Um, typically, we do an annual stewardship campaign, uh, start it uh, in the fall. Um, it's sort of a, 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 a just like starting school, it's like the start of a new church year in some respects, um, and and sort of people come back to church, and there's that that energy for starting something new, um, and that fall campaign is about doing the intentional discernment. Um, you can ask people what their pledges are. I prefer sort of intention cards. Um, you can have a really close look about how your parish has changed and how your wider community has changed. Um, just so you always have that, those fresh eyes looking at, you know, where God has called you to respond in this time and this place. Um, this fall campaign is an opportunity for you to share stories um, and to hear other people's stories, to get their feedback on, on where they see the parish going. Um, story sharing could be things like, um, stories of people, faith journeys that, that inspires others, generosity. Um, I always find uh, in our, one of our parishes, uh, we've done, I think it's called Faces of Grace. We, we've changed the name a few times, Donna. Um, <laughs> um, but it's really just an opportunity for people voluntarily um, to tell about their faith story, about how God has been generous with them and um, all the rewards they have uh, received, um, you know, that spiritual encouragement, how it's emboldened their faith, strengthened their faith, um, mm -hmm. because they've been generous in return. Um, and, and quite often that resonates with people. Uh, it's not just numbers on a page, but it's an actual story that people can relate to. That feedback you gather in the fall helps you in the winter um, as you prepare for annual vestry meetings um, to look at your parish budget, not just as, well, we've got to increase everything 2% from last year or sort of keep doing the same budget year after year, um, but to try and make sure your budget reflects your stewardship goals um, and, and those needs in your parish. Uh, one other thing I recommend for a stewardship uh, campaign is in the winter, when you're sending out your charitable receipts, send a thank you note for the love of all that is holy, please. 
it, we will give you templates. It can just be a little card, but that simple act of saying, thank you. This is what we did with your money. And we would really appreciate if you continue to support us because this is what we want to do. It is amazing how people would respond to that. Um, and, and yeah, people who, who normally, you know, not even part of your parish, but drop $20 at your, your you know, uh, annual fall harvest supper, <laughs> you'd be amazed at how appreciative they are and how they'd respond to that kind of input. Spring. Um, spring is really a time to um, sort of try something new. It's a time of new growth. So if you have some energy, some enthusiasm out of your annual vestry meeting for a new ministry you want, you want to start, Start then. Don't wait till September because you'll sort of lag in, in that summer period. Um, you'll lose some of that, that inertia that you had. So try and start a new ministry in the spring. Um, and don't forget to thank your volunteers. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be just a, a lunch. Um, don't make it a lunch that they have to cater for themselves. <laughs> don't make mm. it a potluck. <laughs> um, have some way of showing your appreciation for your volunteers because I, I, their time alone is, is so valuable. Um, we did a calculation in Leeds Rear and I think we added up the volunteer hours and it was the equivalent of five full-time employees. So if you don't think that volunteers have <laughs> value, um, you're missing part of the picture. I also recommend uh, for spring, uh, do something intergenerational. Um, don't forget that, that some of your best stewards are your youngest stewards. Um, and, and that uh, I'm thinking of, of Sunday school and youth programs and, and see what they have to say. They're not the future of the church, they're the current church. Um, and I ha they have some tremendous ideas. Um, about how to be generous and, and how to respond to God's call. Finally, for summer, use that time for, for planning ahead for your fall campaign. Um, if you wait till September, you will be way behind. <laughs> um, and, and, and it's going to be hard to, to get it all in and, and do sort of a stewardship campaign uh, any justice. Um, but also take a time for Sabbath rest. Um, you know, we, everybody works really hard. Um, so take that rest and, and don't worry about it too much. Um, maybe take June and July off or, or July and August and, and maybe the last two weeks of August you put together your plan. Um, and you know what? If you don't get it done, you don't get it done. Um, don't sweat it. As, as, as Dawn said, stewardship is already being done. Um, so don't worry about... Uh, what programmatics you might be missing. Any questions on that cycle or, or thoughts? Anybody have a cycle that works better? Okay. No. Good. Um, it might get a little problematic with the pandemic. Um, I don't know how annual vestry meetings are going to go this year. Um, I, it, it, it's sort of wait and see. So be creative. Um, in terms of the story sharing, that's something that is really adaptable to our current times because you can record people. Um, you know, even if it's just an audio, a video, or somebody shares a written reflection, mm -hmm. share that on your website, share that in newsletters, share that on your, your Facebook page with permission, of course. Um, but that's something that is really adaptable. Um, one of the things that, that we're doing for our annual uh, campaign is it's not so much about intention cards and, and sort of sending out that usual um, resources to people because we recognize not everybody is in a position to have a predictability in their income or their situation. We don't know how much food is going to go up in price. We don't know how secure jobs are. Um, so it's really 
it might not be the best year to be asking people to commit to an intention of what they want to give next year. Um, so maybe it's an opportunity to ask different questions. You'll get that feedback. Um, we plan on asking people what surprised them. Um, you know, where have there been un unexpected generosity during this pandemic? Uh, what gives them hope? Um, uh, what kindness have they witnessed? Um, and what challenges have they faced? Um, and how can we help? So it's sort of a different uh, perspective on sort of that intention, those, that feedback loop. Chris, what you were just saying now, the points you were just making, <clears throat> that asked uh, as you are uh, also giving people um, the narrative budget, uh, mm -hmm. those questions really make a lot of sense when you look at mm -hmm. what the narrative budget is saying. So in the midst of all of this here, this is who we are, and these are some questions we need to be looking at. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that would be important for people if, if they are looking at a way of, of being able to articulate these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's so, it's particular to, to each uh, congregation's context. Um, you know, everybody has different demographic, um, different socioeconomic makeup. Um, so you really got to know your people uh, to know what questions to ask to get the feedback that you need to, to, to look to the future. But thanks, good. Any other questions or comments there? So these are some specific programs. If you're looking for a resource, if you don't know where to begin, um, these are, are some good places. Um, the first one is Growing Healthy Stewards. Uh, it's been around for a long while. Um, it's a Diocese of Toronto program, and we have tried it in the diocese. Um, there's a couple of parishes that have, have done it well um, and can maybe coach and mentor uh, other parishes. Um, it is quite intensive. Um, you really do need a team. Um, it's quite programmatic, um, sort of very well structured. Um, uh, but there are some good templates that you can adapt and, and use. Um, it's a big binder. Um, if you want, I can send you a, a memory disc, like a, 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 a stick, memory stick, that's what I was looking for, um, with all the resources on it, um, but it can be overwhelming. Um, it, it's a good place to sort of start to see what the potential is, um, but maybe use it to customize something for your particular uh, congregation. Uh, the other one is Giving Our Thanks and Praise, and it is a program of the Anglican Church of Canada. Um, and it's really sort of as, as, as it's defined, a giving program for parish leadership to use. Uh, and it has three core elements, inspire, invite, and thank. Very, very, very basic, very, um, you know, well thought out. Um, inspire is, is telling our story, not just individual stories, but telling the story of, of our parishes. Um, uh, and I think I, I, I make this reference later, um, but I say when you're, when you're telling the story of your parish, don't write it like an obituary, but write it like a, a, a wedding announcement. <laughs> You know, it's not, not like yeah, the church was built on this date, but, but what do you, you know, what are your plans for the future? What is your hope? What brought you together? Um, what is the love you share and, and how are you going to express and share that love with the world? Um, so tell your story. Uh, invite is, is inviting people into uh, being generous um, and seeing how God has been generous with them. Um, and then that thank is creating a culture of gratitude. Um, too often we see scarcity when really there, there is such abundance around us. We just have to look through a different lens, um, you know, that lens of, of Christ's generosity with us. 
there are lots of tools and templates and, and everything um, is uh, on the anglican.ca slash gifts website. Uh, so it offers some, some really good um, templates and, you know, simple things that everybody can adapt, even if you don't want to do that, that whole sort of program. Uh, another element that's sort of a companion to giving our thanks and praise is I or um, I don't know if they've got we intend up, uh, it was still in draft, um, but it's a, a discipleship program. Um, and it has modules on how to live a generous intentional life. Uh, and it's broken into sort of modules that talk about um, creation, time, talent, treasure, and, and sort of our mental and physical well-being. And each of these modules as, has a reflection piece. Um, it asks some questions for people to do sort of uh, a self-reflection. And then uh, it asks them to do some, make some decisions, uh, to make some commitments, to, to think about next steps and, and to actually act. Not, not just get in our heads, but actually, what are we gonna do with this? Uh, and again, that's on the anglican.ca slash gifts as well. There are lots and lots of other programs. Um, uh, I can, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put together, sort of uh, compile a list of resource of websites um, and some books, um, both are sort of on the theology and some on more the practical side. Um, the trick is to sort of take everything with a grain of salt and, and remember who you're working with. Um, don't try to fit yourself to conform to one of these programs if it's just not going to fit. Um, it, you know, it, it's not, not worth a fight. Take what is good, uh, use that, adapt, and, and customize. Does anybody else have any really great programs to share? Uh, Trish, I, I put one together um, kind of on the fly a couple of years ago. I just call it Holy Conversation. Mm. Used it twice in the parishes of Maryburg and the Church of uh, St. Mary Magdalene, Napanee. Mm -hmm. uh, one of its uh, assumptions is that many of our parishes in our diocese find heavy programmatic pieces intimidating and tiring and and beyond their scope. Uh, this, the, the one I put together, it's, it's three sessions, an hour to 90 minutes each. It's assuming that the truth is within us about our sense of vision and purpose for our parish. And, uh, and I'd be happy to engage folk in those conversations, um, you know, in wherever in, in the life of our diocese. Again, it's more conversational, a little less heavily programmatic. Than, and it's helping discern you know, what is God called to do and what are the pillars of the activities that we identify. Great. That's a good place to start if, if yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. Great. Um, just a quick uh, sort of some of the best practices and lessons learned that I sort of pulled off the top of my head. Um, communicate, communicate, communicate. And that includes prayer. Um, you know, communicate with God. Um, communicate between leadership and, uh, and, and the parish members. Um, communicate with your community. Um, you know, communicate wardens and clergy. It, it just keep talking uh, and, and, and ask for, ex, you know, amplification where, where you don't understand. Um, say yes. God said yes. God always says yes. Um, you know, try something new. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to fail. Okay. <laughs> You'll learn something from that. Um, and, and, and just, just keep trying. Uh, work towards creating a culture of gratitude. Um, see abundance, not scarcity. Again, work with what you have. Don't, don't try to, to force yourself into contortions um, because you, you don't have a stewardship program like the Diocese of Toronto. Um, uh, again, I already mentioned, tell your story like a wedding announcement, not an obituary. Um, mm -hmm. It's helpful to include legacy planning. Um, not just, not, 
not sort of in a ghoulish way of, of what are you going to give me once you're dead, <laughs> mm -hmm. but engaging people in the conversation about what do you want your legacy to be? Um, you know, where, you know, what's your plan? Do you have a will? Um, do you have a funeral plan? Um, and, and start thinking about that because it, it's, it's life. Um, and, and it's a celebration of our transition from this life to the next. Um, and then my sort of final point there is, is use networks and use partnerships. Um, talk to people and, and doesn't just don't, don't be insular, don't be always inward looking, but look outward um, and, and see who has some, some great ideas. Um, some of our best ideas come from our community partners, um, both uh, for-profit and non-profit. Anyhow, anybody have a, something that they, they has really worked well for them? Anybody have a really nasty stewardship story? <laughs> no names. All right, um, just about done. Thank you for your time. Uh, so we are in a pandemic and, and that has certainly shuffled the deck chairs. Um, one of the things that I, I can sort of encourage people is to be creative. Um, again, that that's, gets back to that say yes. Um, try something. Uh, you don't know uh, how the Holy Spirit is, is going to, to make that work. Um, try to be creative, engage lots of people, bounce ideas off one another, um, and, and try it. And, and you might be surprised. Uh, learn what online resources are out there and, and use them um, if you can. Um, be wary of some of them. Um, I, I know I, Facebook for me is one of those necessary evils. Um, it's just, it, it's a way we can sort of share our online services and, and communicate, uh, but using them for fundraising and paying them for, <laughs> that's not something I'm, I'm necessarily comfortable with doing. Um, so just, uh, but, but see what's out there and do your research. And, and certainly um, we can help uh, with that and we can help guide you. There are lots of um, opportunities for online donations and fundraising. Uh, don't forget about pre-authorized giving. Um, uh, the diocese can certainly help uh, encourage people if they want, if they, if they can, can do that, if they're comfortable doing that. Um, a lot of parishes have started doing e-transfer, uh, which is automatically deposited in their online banking account for the parish. Um, and I think that's been working uh, really well in, in some places. Uh, there's also things like Canada Helps, um, though they do take a, a small percentage. We can be creative in how we do fundraising. Um, we've got uh, in one of our parishes an online auction coming up in uh, October, not August, <laughs> in October. Um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, lots of other organizations have already done this. So go and plagiarize. Um, <laughs> do likewise. Um, think about how a favorite event can be retooled. Um, to, to fit within our pandemic protocols. I encourage you to find a way to build community. Um, and, and especially don't forget about the people who are not online. Um, you know, telephone was a wonderful invention and, and it's nice that we have sort of re-embraced that technology. Or uh, do, you know, if you have a, a favorite matriarch who's got a birthday coming up soon, arrange a drive-by birthday uh, celebration, you know, go honk your horns, drop off cards, whatever. Um, but don't, don't, don't let that fall away. Um, be more intentional about that. Um, listen, and that's part of, of communicating as well and praying, but listen to what God is, is calling to you um, and listen yes. to one another for what people are really trying to say. Don't be afraid to take an, 
an intentional sabbatical from some activities. Um, I know a lot of parishes have gotten away from doing their church suppers um, and, and they feel that they just get wrapped up in anxiety about it. It's like, no, this is a good thing. This is a sabbatical break. Um, this is a time for us to sort of re-energize ourselves and, and reinvent ourselves. And, and God is giving us a Sabbath. <laughs> Let's take it and, and, and not, not work ourselves into a dither about it. Um, and then finally, reach out for help. Um, the diocese is here. Uh, Wayne is um, certainly there as Archdeacon of Program and Ministry. Um, I'm the Chair of Stewardship and Congregational Development. Uh, I'm happy to talk with you and, and, and uh, help set up some mentorship opportunities. Um, and uh, yeah, so don't, don't be afraid to ask. That... Anybody have uh, anything inspiring? Let's go back. But has anybody done something really creative in the pandemic that has worked really well? I, um, I feel that the, um, the, the amount of work and energy that's gone into creating the online activities, um, we're still getting through, going through that. And um, that, that has been a sort of new activity which people are learning through and that's probably taken all our energies up to now mm -hmm. yep. and that's that's fine yeah mm. yeah no you don't have yeah there, there, there's not a need to to bite off more than you can chew um i i think online activity is certainly paying um dividends in terms of communicating with with a wider audience um i know our online services we have a lot more people that just our parish list that that you know people in our parishes that that attend. Um, we don't always know who they are, um, but they're there, and and it's great. It's awesome. Yeah. John, you make a very very good point, um, in my opinion, in that many of our parishes have an online presence through worship and other other meetings. Um, certainly we've had half a year of almost all diocesan work until very recently being online. Um, so we've been blessed with a variety of ways of being connected. Um, but what I found very intriguing the last three Sundays being back in churches was an almost visceral reaction um, and quite a bit of emotion of people gathering together grateful for the ways we connected, but delighted that we could gather with a lot of administrative care and organization to keep buildings clean and safe, and also just a sheer dose of curiosity about how church can carry on safely and well. Uh, so it's holding those two in a kind of creative tension, being connected and or being gathered. Questions? Does anybody have any burning questions or something they'd like to discuss? Not really. Are there thoughts on um, other stewardship topics you'd like us to talk about in the future? Um, Trisha, it's Kathy Condi at um, St. Mary Magdalene in, in Picton. And I'd, I'd be interested in learning from other people about stewardship, ongoing stewardship, once you've completed a big campaign. So during the pandemic, we were very fortunate to be able to raise well over, I mean, over $130,000 to replace the roof and while maintaining and being able to continue the operations of the church. So now <laughs> everybody's stepping back and saying, whew. So to even mention stewardship, you can imagine people would say, you've got to be kidding. So I'm trying to think about how, what might that conversation look like going forward? So we are thinking about things, but not, not necessarily talking about money right now, because I know I think I'd be thrown out of the building. So be interested in anyone's experiences or thoughts on that. Can I respond to that, Trish? Sure, please. Um, one of the things that I think is really important when you're a stewardship leader in your parish is that you not limit your stewardship to 
kind of the annual campaign, but that you have year round stewardship plans because what I've found over the last two decades or so is that the word stewardship, as Douglas says, intimidates people. But if you focus on it year round in your parish, people become less and less intimidated by it. Sometimes if you're always asking them for funds or whatever, um, sometimes they will become fatigued, but they aren't intimidated by the word stewardship. So you can come back to it and back to it and back to it. If you're talking about it on really on a monthly or whatever basis, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's, it's sort of mm -hmm. approaching stewardship from a, from a different, instead of the financial stewardship, look at missional stewardship or environmental stewardship, um, just so people get the connection that it's not just about money. Um, the I intend uh, worksheets might actually be helpful um, just because it does uh, look at some of those um, different elements uh, of stewardship, um, not just the financial, but, but asking how people are, are caring for creation, for example, um, or how are people, um, I'm just trying to grab my book here. Um, uh, I think you know, how, how, how are how are people um, being good stewards of their time? Uh, that's a really good topic for people. Um, and, and it helps people understand where they're, you know, maybe putting their energy that that isn't 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 good um, in, in terms of isn't um, feeding their own spiritual development and, and isn't um, for God. Um, I, I, I know I, I, I admit I, I spend way too much playing spider solitaire. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But, but, you know, those are, those are different approaches, but use that word stewardship um, apart from, from financial stewardship and they'll, they'll start to start to understand. Hopefully. I think it's really important if you're using an intention card or a pledge card doesn't much matter, but I think the important focus is on what, people are willing to contribute to their parish in terms of time and talent, rather than putting the blatant focus on uh, financial stewardship. But at the same time, I think the narrative budget is an important piece, as I think uh, John or Dom were saying, that goes along with that uh, pledge card or intention card, whatever it may be. Because in the, the narrative budget, people can see where they can contribute time and talent. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we put with ours is also the total number of volunteer hours. So That's that right. people can see where we're putting that energy into. One um, of the things that we've done along with uh, the uh, narrative budget, mm -hmm. uh, we've not, uh, basically, we've kind of ignored what the uh, financial um, plan for the year mm -hmm. is going to be. Uh, we talk about uh, the uh, the cost of looking at the various areas of ministry, and we've divided that up into five areas. And so the narrative budget reflects what's happening in each one of those areas. And uh, what the last speaker was saying, and I don't know your name, Donna Robinson. Donna, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Donna mm -hmm. was saying it's important to look at things like volunteer hours, and it's not that you say, well, this is the, the time we, we've spent and say, well, that's enough. What you do is uh, sort of look at the time that's, uh, that's volunteered and that's every bit as important as what uh, the financial has been. But also we, there needs to be some kind of activity around gifts discernment. So that when you look at time and you look at the financial, the gifts discernment is where generally the most important things of ministry are actually going to be happening. And so I was wondering, is there anything in what you've got, Trish, uh, in your uh, stewardship resources about looking at uh, uh, a gifts uh, inventory or some kind of a discernment workshop or some kind of activity so that we can begin to look at those things in our parish along with all that we're doing for stewardship? Mm -hmm. I, I 
do have some resources. I can't bring them up right now, but I will make sure that that I, I sort of include um, some attachments and we'll we'll put them up on our website, uh, the diocesan website. Um, but both uh, individual gift discernment and sort of group uh, gift discernment. Um, yeah, because we at one point we were doing a uh, basically gift discernment workshop, but it just never happened. Something got in the way. <laughs> But I have all those resources. Um, and for, for personal use, I used um, Strengths Finder 2.0. I don't know if anybody's read that, that book. Um, but you do a, it includes a little online quiz. Um, and uh, it comes back with, with some surprising insight into your own sort of, uh, sort of gifts um, and opportunities for growth. Um, yeah. So I, I really recommend uh, that, that resource. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I'd, I'll definitely share that. Thanks, Trish. Okay. Trish, mm -hmm. if I could, if I could just add um, an encouragement not to be afraid of the S word. So, in other words, stewardship or steward or faithful stewardship or whatever appears every Sunday in our services of worship and beyond. Whether it's in the, it could be in the program with some reflection. It could be in the preaching ministry of the church can be part of a Bible study, et cetera. And second, to build on success. So the example in, in PIC, I think, is awesome. It speaks to a community that are committed and are willing to be generous. And it's as if they're saying the building and financial need and point of entree to what's, what is God calling us to do next in missional stewardship or environmental stewardship or any one of a number of other ways in which it is revealed and lived into. And, uh, and finally, commit to it over time. We have a wonderful stewardship consultant in our diocese a number of years ago named Rob Waller from British Columbia. One thing he implored us as a diocese who'd committed to stewardship dating back at least to the 1990s, please don't treat it like the flavor of the month stick with over time and and prayerfully watch it bear fruit okay was that helpful kathy mm. yes, or sir. overwhelming <laughs> Thank you. All right. mm. any other questions I will leave you with uh, both uh, Wayne and my contact information. If you have any questions, send us an email, give me a call, um, and happy to discuss uh, your own sort of uh, individual context. Um, and I have a Zoom host license, so you know if you want to do that over online, we can do that too. Um, and uh, otherwise, I appreciate. Uh, your time today. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, we will try to offer um, some more stewardship workshops, probably in the evening. Um, that's, that's sort of the feedback, and we'll look for what sort of evening of the week will, will work best. Um, some of the topics we're looking at is, is in fact, funeral planning uh, and uh, legacy planning um, uh, and wills and the environmental stewardship piece. So if you have ideas, please uh, let us know and uh, we'll try to incorporate those. And stewardship of the stewardship of the clergy. Mm, clergy care. Yeah, <laughs> clergy care. Mm -hmm. we, we may be able, Trish, to invite a few others around a legacy planning work. Mm -hmm. I know I participated one in Trenton mm -hmm. I don't know. It wasn't that long ago. It just feels like it was years ago. <laughs> um, but it was everything from, you know, what hymns do you want sung at a funeral to uh, um, what, what are you allowing for in the future? Yeah. I have uh, this. You probably can't read it. It's backwards. Um, but it's uh, the Anglican Foundation. Um, oh, sorry, the Foundation of the Anglican Diocese of Toronto uh, put out a brochure on estate planning that includes everything um, from sort of that estate legacy gift planning to uh, wills to funerals. Um, 
that in con conjunction with uh, the, the seminar from Trenton, I think will be a very fruitful um, conversation. Okay. Wayne, any last thoughts? And would you like to? Uh, oh, any? Sorry, John, did you have another question? Nope. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, uh, Trish, thank you so much for the time and effort you put into to mm -hmm. forward to having monthly gatherings with folk mm -hmm. diocese. And friends, thank you for giving your time to be with us uh, this afternoon. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks to you for the gift of this day and for all that is gracious in the lives of people and throughout creation. We covet your grace and spirit to enable us to take care of ourselves, our relationships, our churches, and the wider world. And we give this time to you in your name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.